CR NH3 all 6 3 plus is paramagnetic while NiCN4 2 minus is diamagnetic. Why? People are asking for an explanation. Let's have it. First of all, you need to find out which are the central atoms. You have chromium 3 plus electronic configuration argon 3D3 and nickel is plus 2 which is argon 3D8. There is a remarkable difference. Ammonia is a moderately strong field ligand and cyanide is a very strong field ligand. So, let's start with chromium itself. Now, let's explore this complex. 1, 2, 3. This is 3, D3. Now, as 6 ammonia molecules approach, they offer, will donate lone pairs. Do you have space? And it says, yes, we have as much space as you need. We are D2, sp3 hybridized. And we have 6 lovely orbitals which are ready-made empty. There is no need to force to pair somebody. There is no requirement at all. That means that these three electrons will always stay the way they are. Yes, they will. That means uh, the overall complex would have three unpaired electrons as well on chromium. It will. That means paramagnetic. Yes. Spin only diamagnetic moment is root n n plus 2, which will be root 15 Bohr magneton. Ultimately, it is paramagnetic because of these unpaired electrons. Fine. What about nickel? Let's take a look at the electronic configuration of nickel. Let us not forget that cyanide ions are the really ugly ones and they are, you know, they, they wield a lot of power and they can pair up things. So, if you have D8 configuration, that means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It will be pushed in and forced to pair up. I am just left with this DSP2. DSP2 hybridization, yes. Square planar geometry. And since cyanide ions being strong field ligands can force a pairing in D8 configuration of nickel, this is what I get. This is the valence bond theory explanation of why chromium is paramagnetic while nickel is not. Cyanide ion pairs up all the unpaired electrons and since no unpaired electrons are left on nickel or on the complex, it becomes diamagnetic. As simple as this.